Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. I've been on the lookout for interesting webcams and I came across another one recently. This is the Anker C300 and it has some hardware features built in that can adjust the framing of the shot so that you can move around a little bit and have the camera's image follow you. Additionally, it has really good low light capabilities and a built-in microphone. I thought we'd take a closer look at this and see what it's all about. But before we do, I want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in from Anchor free of charge. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this camera is all about. Now, the list price on this is about $130, but I've seen it for less with coupons from time to time. So shop around a little bit. There's not much to it. It is your standard webcam. You can plug it into your computer using its USB Type-C port here in the back. If you don't have a USB-C port on your computer, it comes with an adapter, so everything you need in the box to get going is included. And you don't need to install any software initially to use it. When you plug it in, it'll get recognized uh, as a camera and a microphone, and you can just go off and running from there. But it does get more interesting when you load up their software and configure the camera's behavior, which I'll show you in a little bit. Now, one of the things I like about this is how adjustable its base is. I'm going to attach it to my laptop here so you can get a feel for it. It works pretty well with thin bezeled laptops like this one. It doesn't take up too much room at the top of your display. And it has this foot here that kind of runs flat to the back of the monitor. You do need to kind of hold it in place as you're making fine adjustments to it because it will fall off relatively easily. Um, but once it's in place, it's pretty secure. And you've got a lot of movement here of the camera. You can even have it pointing straight down. Uh, so it's really nice that you can just get it fine-tuned to exactly where you want it to be. You've got all this movement here up and down uh, in addition to adjusting the position of the clip itself. So it's a really nice stand here. Additionally, there's a tripod mount on the bottom so you can screw it into a tripod and have it uh, work on a tripod as well. So a lot of flexibility here for getting it attached to your computer. So let's take a look now at the software that will drive the camera. We have it connected up to my Windows PC here, but it also works on the Mac. And as you can see right now, we've got it at a 1080p resolution at 30 frames per second. It will go up to 60 frames per second. And you've got a couple of options here for how it operates. Now, by default, it has a 115 degree field of view. And this is a bit wider than some of the other webcams you might encounter, especially the ones that are built into your laptop. So you can tighten that up a bit here by adjusting the framing manually. And it might be hard to see on this image, but as I get closer in, uh, so for example, if I go to 78%, we lose some of the clarity of the image because it is digitally zooming it in. And the sensor here is natively running at 1080p. So as you zoom in digitally, you're going to lose some of the image quality. Uh, that's not a big deal if you're on Zoom or Google Meet or something where your video gets mangled up pretty decently. But if you're looking to do live streaming or something like that, you will see a noticeable degradation in image quality anytime you go in at a more narrow angle versus the default here. And I will uh, direct feed this camera in in a few minutes so you can see the visual quality of it. One issue I've been running into with the software here is that when you have the software up to configure the camera, you can't actually use any other software with it. So if you try to load up Zoom and uh, see how the software changes will impact things in Zoom, it doesn't work because the camera is being used by the configuration software at the moment. Now you also have some automatic framing modes that will move the image around automatically. Uh, the one that works best for a single person is the self frame option. And as you can see here, as I move around, most of the time, it will try to follow the location of my face and get me zoomed in. And if I stand up here, it will actually follow me and zoom out as far as it can uh, to get me into the image better. And this is kind of a neat thing if you're on a Zoom call because you can move around a lot. You could get up and show something that might be in your hand without having to adjust the camera. The camera itself, though, doesn't move. What's happening here is that it is zooming in within the max area that it can cover at that 115 degree angle. And so it won't be able to see things off camera, obviously, because the camera can't actually move. So you do have a pretty good area in which you can move around. Uh, but if you find that it's a little too aggressive or this, the shot is a little too tight, 
uh, you can switch into this auto frame mode that is better suited for a room where you uh, have multiple people with you, for example, or if you just feel like that tight shot is a little too distracting to the audience. Uh, this is a shot that I took with my daughters to show you how this auto frame works with multiple people. And the camera does its best to try to figure out uh, who is in frame and what to focus on. Uh, but again, the single frame mode is going to be the more aggressive of the two. There's a few other options that are worth taking a look at here. Uh, one is the HDR option or high dynamic range. I haven't found much of an improvement in this mode here. So when I have it enabled, it looks a little bit better maybe, but not much under my studio lights. I also found that the image gets a little flickery sometimes when this is enabled, so I've been leaving it off. Uh, one thing to note on this HDR feature is that when you have it enabled, the camera maxes out at 30 frames per second. So you can't have HDR on and run it at 60. There's also an anti-flicker option, which is important if you have LED lights like I do. I found that a lot of my LED lights were flickering on the camera, so when you turn this filter on and set it to 60 hertz, if you're here in the US, it gets rid of that flickering. Other parts of the world will need to set it at 50 hertz, depending on how your electric system is configured. Uh, you do have some manual controls, but not a lot. So you can adjust the brightness, the saturation, the contrast ratio, and the sharpness, but not much more beyond that. Uh, so, for example, we looked at the Elgato face cam a little while back. That one is designed for live streamers, and it had a lot of manual controls. This one doesn't give you as many. And as such, I'm going to recommend this one mostly for people that are on web conferences, not people that are doing professional or semi-professional uh, video production work like I do. Now, one neat thing about the settings here is that they are stored on the camera itself. So I can unplug the camera from this computer and plug it into a different one, and all the settings will be with the camera. And I don't need to have any Anchor software on the other computer at all. It's all stored inside of the camera here. Let's take a look now at some visual quality examples with a direct feed from the camera, and then we'll check out its microphone. So here is a direct feed out of the camera. There might be a little bit of a lip sync issue based on how I have things configured at the moment, but I think it looks pretty good. The image quality is nice and sharp. This is the 115 degree view, which is the best quality image that you're going to get out of it. And what I'm gonna do in a second is go back into the software and turn on that auto framing feature to see how it looks when it's moving around. And what I'll also do is enable the built-in microphone so you can see and hear what it sounds like. Let's get that enabled. All right, so now you can hear the audio coming out of the camera's microphones. It sounds fine for a webcam, nothing spectacular. It does have built-in noise cancellation, but you can't turn it off. And I found that it's often misinterpreting what it's hearing and you'll get dips in your audio occasionally. It does, though, do a pretty good job filtering out fan noise from a laptop or something like that, but louder white noises it has a harder time with. So it's adequate, but if you are doing production work or you want a better sounding uh, audio for your fancy Zoom presentation, you might want to get a secondary microphone and use that instead. Uh, right now, I do have it on that aggressive uh, panning feature here. And as you can see, when it's zoomed in, it loses some of its visual quality and clarity because it is digitally zooming on that 1080p image. And it's you know, gonna definitely be noticeable on a production system like this one, uh, but let's take a look at how it might look in an actual zoom window. All right, I'm back on my regular microphone now and I've got zoom loaded up and you can see what my video looks like here in the window. I do have HD video enabled on zoom right now and Zoom does degrade the quality a little bit, and that actually helps things to some degree. And depending on the type of Zoom call that you're on, if you're in one of those multi-box scenarios there, I think you'll look pretty good, and you will get decent visual quality along with a, a image that will pan around a little bit that might set you apart from other people in the call. Now, a little bit earlier, I turned off all the lights here in the studio. This is my main camera. And you can see just how well the webcam here does in practically no light. Uh, the only light source I had here was the laptop screen. Uh, there is some light being reflected on the other side of my basement here from a door that you can see reflected in that picture, but it really doesn't light up this corner of the room very well. But the camera was able to pick out a lot of detail. It got a lot of the color detail as well. It is a bit noisy, that's to be expected, but not awful. 
and I was really, really impressed with the low light capabilities here. And I think this will work very well in a web conferencing environment. But of course, getting some lights installed might be the best option to better illuminate your scene. Now, if you're concerned about privacy, they do have a shutter that they include in the box so you can block the lens when you're not using the camera. Or of course, you can just unplug it. Overall, not a bad web camera. Better suited, I think, for Zoom conferences and Google Meets and Microsoft Teams and whatnot. I will probably not recommend this for live streamers. I think there are better quality cameras out there, even in webcam uh, format here, like the Elgato Face Cam. But for a lot of folks looking for a decent webcam for their video conferences, this will definitely be better than what's built into your laptop. The microphone might be better too, depending on the laptop that you have, but overall, uh, not a bad option. Uh, to consider, especially given you get some of those auto framing features that might be useful, especially if you like to move around a lot when you're presenting. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.tv supporters, including Gold Level supporters Jim Tannis and Tom Albrecht, Hot Sauce and Video Games and Eric's Variety Channel, Brian Parker and Frank Goldman. Amda Brown and Matt Zagaya, and Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv s.